touch. You still get in touch? Hey, Amen. You should be ro ro roasting in God's presence right now, man. That sweet smelling aroma. God loves the smell of your flesh cooking. First Pete chapter 5, verse 5, please. Likewise, you younger people. That means immature also. Babies, whatever. Submit yourselves to those who are more mature, to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. That means respectful. And be clothed with what? Humility. Humility. Humbleness. For God resists the proud and gives grace, which is his plan, to the humble. Amen? Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time or release you what's needed, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He says, be sober and be vigilant. Sober means what? Alert. Vigilant means consistent. This is essential. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith, your connection and relationship with the Spirit, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're not the only one going through it. But may the God of all grace or the plan of escape, who called us to eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've been challenged, suffered a little bit, may perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you so that you're never moved again. Do you understand what was just released? Amen. What is he saying? Be on guard. Everyone say, be on guard. You know, the enemy is doing everything he can right now to steal, kill, and destroy. There are things that are happening in the world that people can't imagine. The technology that the powers of dark are utilizing, even weather technology. Before these earthquakes happened, there were certain things that appeared in the sky every time. See, they have technology that can manipulate weather. Does everybody understand? They're causing these things to kill people. These earthquakes were created by demonic fallen angel technology. Does everybody understand? See, because we're not fighting flesh and blood, remember that always. Always. And where these earthquakes were on, in Turkey and all the things that's going on, it's associated with also the U Euphrates River, which the Bible says in Revelations that it will be dried up so that the powers of the enemy can come through. All of these things are happening. This train thing that just accident just happened. It just didn't happen. That's not an accident. That was on purpose to what? Contaminate the water in Ohio and it was spread through all over the place. It's this fulfillment of revelation and prophecy. And he's saying, be on guard so that you don't get sucked into the fear and all the stuff that's going on. Be on guard. Be awake. Be alert. Be prepared. And, you know, it, it's, it's wild because there was a, a, a gentleman giving his testimony who the Lord had get, given a visit to. And he was taken in the spirit. And one of the things he kept explaining to this gentleman was that he says, get ready because things aren't going to get better. They're going to get worse for the world. But, in other words, your light will shine. And remember that I'm in control. See, so many times people lose sight that God's in control because of all the stuff that's happening. He's in control. Everything here that's exposure and everything that's going on, God's still in control. No matter what the enemy does, it's always going to backfire. Many people will die. Many people think things are happening. The Bible tells us that a, what, a third of the population will be destroyed. But God will rescue and bring them all home, those that are right with God. Amen. So we are in a time right now where we must be on guard. The enemy is, is focused as a put. It says here is very something very important. He says, cast your cares upon the Lord. In other words, cast your will. All of these things. What the enemy tries to do, and this is what we have to be on guard about, 
is that the enemy focuses to put the will of self into your hands. That's his job. If he can put the will of self into your hands, then he takes the will of God out of you. In other words, we willfully exchange it not even knowing. Fear is one of those areas that the enemy puts the will of self back into the hands of humanity. Is everybody okay? And he takes away the will of God. That's why we must be alert and consistent in what we call be on guard. Be on guard. Amen? Be on guard. Mark 4.13. This is where, you, you know, and be on guard is essential. In other words, there are things that you may have to do that, uh, uh, that you weren't doing before. In other words, change a certain uh, area uh, of, a, I don't want to say routine, but things that you're accustomed to do. Why? Because something may be being destroyed in one area, and God is saying, don't go there. Many people are planning vacations and so forth, you better make sure that you're hearing from God. Be on guard. Amen. Verse 13, let's speak it. And Jesus said to him, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? He begins to explain, the sower sows the what? The word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown, when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or challenges or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they do what? They stumble. Now, these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. In other words, you can't mix the word with the will or the desires of self. It will not work. There's a lot of people who know the word. Oh, I know the word. I've spoken the word for years. I can read the Bible inside and out. I know the page numbers. Then why are you still doing the stupid things you do? Because you can't mix the word, which is of spirit, with the flesh. I mean, with the spirit, uh, with the flesh or the self. You can't mix it. You can't partake of it. Why? Because it's the will of the self, isn't it? You can't bring the Word of God, which is holy and righteous and true and is of the Spirit of God, and try and play it in your life of the flesh. It won't work. Never will and never gonna. Just ain't gonna. It can't mix. It's like putting oil in water. It just doesn't mix, does it? Oh, do you get it? Hallelujah. Because it cares that it was, verse 20, but these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Why? Knowing the word can puff you up, <laughs> but there, when there's true revelation, see, the Bible tells us about knowledge. The word of God is knowledge, amen? Knowing the word can puff you up. But true revelation will humble you. Many fall into pride without revelation, knowledge of the Word of God. The Word is spirit, not flesh. Amen? The Word is what? Spirit, not flesh. This is where we must be awake and be on guard. Amen? Be awake, be alert, and be on guard. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, do what? Gird up the loins of your mind or your thoughts. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace, which is what? God's plan of escape. 
that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to former loss as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who is without partiality, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear or reverence, honor, and respect. You cannot, again, if you do not have true relationship with the Lord, you won't even respect his presence. You won't respect his word. Oh, you may speak it, but you'll have no idea because it's not alive to you. You see, the Word of God is not written, it's a person. Amen? So what's written is what was recorded, what was spoken. But the Word of God is a person. That's why he's called the Word of God, Jesus. We're to have a relationship with the person. People have a relationship with the Bible and never had a relationship with the person. Shameful. So they never know the voice of God, so how can they know the mind of God? They can't. They'll live an up and down life. They'll want to be doing the right thing, but they can't. Because the power is not released to them. God can't trust them. They're unstable. Double-minded. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Glory to God. Gird up the loins of your thoughts. Be on guard. <laughs> Rest on the plan of God. Maintain the presence of God. You know what the presence of the, the, the fruit of the presence of God is reverence of God. It's called the fear of the Lord. That is the fruit of the presence of God, the fear of the Lord. When an individual does not express the fear of the Lord, it's because they don't have the presence of God. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, please. You know, the word gird is associated with uh, tighten up. Oh, it's an active word. <laughs> prepare for action. Gird up. Prepare for action. Amen. The Bible says be ready in season and out, right? Amen. <laughs> First Timothy 6, 17. Let's speak it together. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to what? Enjoy. Let them, be, let them do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding profane and idle babblings, and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you or to you. Hallelujah. Guard and complete the mission. Knowing the voice of the Spirit, you will know the mind of the Spirit. Be on guard. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. You know, there must be a desire to want to learn, to do the right thing. There must be a desire. Without that desire, God won't give it to you. Let's speak it together. Rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Always. Yeah, man, not when you feel like it. Always, especially when you're miserable. Rejoice in the Lord. Just start praising God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen? Then you, what you're doing, you're changing the atmosphere. Because the enemy knows you're miserable. And he's getting, now you're feeding him. Hallelujah. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice and let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for everything. Be anxious for what? Nothing. What is anxiousness? Is it fear? Yeah. This is how the enemy gets people out of position. What does anxiousness do? It puts the will of self back into your hands. Come on. It puts the what? The will of self back into your hands again. And if you're holding the will of self in your hands, you ain't holding the will of God. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then what? The peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, it will what? Guard your hearts, will protect and the thoughts or minds through Christ Jesus. Oh, glory. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, focus, meditate means focus, on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will what? Be with you. Is there anything that God can't do? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Did you ever see when, they, when the, uh, they're going to ready to sword fight? On guard! Amen? Instead of Z for whatever, it's J for Jesus. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. In other words, they're going to be listening to their voices. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, they can't hear anything God is saying. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Wow. They will depart from the faith or connection to the Holy Spirit, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. If it's not the doctrine of Christ, it's the doctrine of demons. Amen? Amen. 2 Timothy 4, in verse 1. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be what? Be ready in season and out of Be on guard. Convince. Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. Come on. Their own what? Desires. Where do those desires come from? Doctrines of demons. Seducing spirit, the voice of a stranger. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers that will agree with their desires. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables and lies and deception. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist to fulfill your calling or your ministry. Itching ears. Man, we're seeing itchy. There's a battle over itchy ears these days. I mean, look at what's going on right now globally. The enemy is killing and destroying as much as he can. This is just, this is just a small part of what we're entering. But the body of Christ will shine. The Lord's got it all in control. Amen? Our responsibility is spiritual warfare. We must warfare. Rescue those who've been taken captive through warfare, through prayer. Amen? This is how it happens. Without prayer, nothing can happen. 
We're called to warfare in prayer. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in your thoughts or your mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the what? Falling away comes first. Now, are they going to fall away by itching ears? Yeah, doctrines of demons. Yes, we're seeing. Look at the falling away. What you're seeing is a manifestation of those who have fallen away and been taken away. Unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, which has not happened yet, although he is here, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Well, that's not happened yet. Amen? Because the day that happens, we get raptured. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Who? The Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit in being used, restraining the powers of darkness, or all hell would be broke out. There wouldn't be anything holding them back. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. This is where many people are not going to be on guard. They'll be easily deceived. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. And that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. Falling away has been in progress already. It's going to continue to increase. 1 John chapter 2, and verse 15. But speak it, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is what? Passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So remember that the powers of darkness are always trying to get the will of self back into your hands. Amen? That's their job. Verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. That's if you're truly in fellowship with the presence of God and the anointing of God. I've not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you do know it, and that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He's Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. In other words, we want the anointing to teach us, not a man or a woman. Amen? The anointing. 
But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him, abiding in the anointing. And remember, the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 1, please. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk into what? Please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification. That means separation from yourself. That you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testify, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Wow. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. But we what? Command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly, and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you. Nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil day and night, that we might not be a burden to any of you. And not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves a what? An example of how you should follow. Example. We need to be the examples, amen, in everything. We must be alert. We must be on guard in everything that's going on, not be shaken, not be moved. Things are going to happen. Our trust is in the Lord. Our hope is in the Lord. We're standing on solid ground, not shaky. It may be shaking all around you. And if it starts shaking on you, just step on solid ground. Amen. Step out of the puddle of affliction. Most of the afflictions come because they, we bring them on ourselves. Quit blaming the devil for the stuff you're going through. What you sow is what you reap. Yeah, man. And I'm going to close it, Jude. In verse 5. Be on guard. You will hear of more and more stuff going on. I mean, they're throwing it out like candy. It's deceptive candy. I want you to know that. You can't, you can't, listen. It's constant lies now. It's just constant. It's like I don't even listen to the stuff no more. But I am watching some things to, to stay alert, to be, to be on guard, to be ready, things that God is revealing. You know, and, and being on guard allows you to also target areas of warfare. But I want to <clears throat> remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward, destroyed those who did not believe or follow. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their dom own dom abode, he restrained in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Now what angels are those? Those are the ones that put on flesh and came into women. Amen? As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a the similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also th these dreamers defile the flesh, rejecting authority and speak evil dignitaries, 
Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, <clears throat> dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of what, whatever they do not know, and whatever they know, they know naturally. Like brute, brute beasts in these things, they corrupt themselves. Woe to them. Uh, woe is W-O-E, without eternity. Hello? Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit, to perish in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feasts, while they feast with you, without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds. Late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Raging waves of the seas, foaming up their own shame. Wandering stars of whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men and women. Also saying, behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. To execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them all of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Nobody gets away with it. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, may remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having a relationship in the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up, praying and uh, building your most holy faith, praying in the tongues or praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, ha hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. <clears throat> now to him who's able to keep you from stumbling, <laughs> keep you on guard, and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with everlasting joy and exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and now and forever and ever and ever. Again, we are in a time right now. <clears throat> you know, we're seeing all of these, remember it talks about wars and rumors of wars, famines and so forth. We haven't hit the big stuff yet. It's, it's happening. But it will begin to increase more more and more. We must be on guard so that we don't get run over. Amen. So that we get distracted or deceived. This is a part of the great awakening. We must stay awake and alert. We can't be sucked into all of the stuff that's out there. Nothing, I mean, you can't help it. You're going to hear it and you're going to see it. <clears throat> and that's what you can do is pray for people's rescues. But what a time and season to be alive. Amen. We are watching the fulfillment of prophecy. And we're in it. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word and your release of prophetic insight. We thank you for the opportunity of standing in your presence, worshiping you, and glorying in your glory. You are awesome and you are true and there's none like you. So, Lord, I'm asking even tonight for each and every one and anyone that's watching or listening or going to hear this teaching, Lord, that you would put them on guard and prepared. Don't let them be shaken. Don't let them be strong in the Lord and the power of your might in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.